What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we are talking about late summer crankbait fishing and my favorite baits to catch them right now. Can you believe it? We're already talking about late summer. Man, time flies, these seasons fly. You know, you might've been out there catching them on a frog or a topwater bait or flipping and punching, but believe it or not, we're already talking about late summer and that early fall transition, right? Overnight lows are getting cooler, means water temps are dropping, and it means those fish are active, but understand that that transition is coming and sometimes it's hard to stick with those fish as they leave or vacate the areas where you were catching them in the grass, on top water, flipping, punching, even offshore on your ledges. You know, it's all about those bait fish as the water temps drop, those fish are gonna congregate, they're gonna find those shad balls, those bait balls, and they're gonna munch them and a crankbait, like we've said for a long time, a crankbait is probably the best bait for triggering that core response for a bass to eat. You know, a crankbait, when it's down there deflecting and changing directions and stopping and going and floating up and going and deflecting, it's, it's kind of that cat and mouse game. And to, in my opinion, a crankbait is the best bait to trigger bass right you know you might have a swim bait or a worm and a, a, a bass swims over and eats it because it wants to eat it that five inch worm isn't triggering that bass to eat but this blowing by them changing directions deflecting that's that typical cat and mouse type game right uh, you dra drag something fast or quickly by a fat lazy cat as fat, as lazy as it is, it's still gonna get interested and chase, right? Now, I'm sure there's exceptions to the rule. You guys, I don't need to hear all the comments down below that your cat's the laziest or the fattest, but for the most part, that cat will chase that mouse. Same thing with a bass. They want, they're hardwired to chase and eat. So when you're getting that directional change down there, you're burning this thing, you're pausing it, it's floating back up, you're diving it down, it's hitting something, deflecting, maybe you're ripping it through grass, they want to chase and they will eat even if they don't want to chase, okay? So this time of the year, late summer, you know, all summer long, I've been throwing the Magnum cranks, you know, your 10 XDs, your big Mega Bass, your big Azumas, you know, your Magnum cranks. You're talking cranks that get down to 22, 25 feet deep. Now for me, as we get into this late summer, I typically downsize. The biggest crank I will throw will be probably a 6 XD, something down in that 15 to 20 foot range, but it's all about covering water. Again, these fish are starting to move they're changing their areas where they've been, you have to cover water and find where those fish are going. Again, it's all about the bait fish. Now with today's electronics, you got 360 imaging, you got side imaging, you got forward facing sonar. You can see out in front of you, to the side of you, down below you, all around you where those fish are, if they're there, if they're not, if there's bait balls, if there's not. If you're around the bait, you will catch bass this time of the year. So. Again, I like to downsize my cranks a little bit. You know, chucking and winding that 10XD all day, you can burn it, but man, it wears out your, your, your shoulder, your elbow, your wrist, you know, just launching it all day. It's a grinder and you still can catch fish, but in my opinion or from my experience, I've caught more fish as they move shallow. You know, maybe it's only 15 foot, but they're not down in that 22, 25 chasing the shad anymore. Some, some fisheries, different, right? But for the most part, I really like that 6XD and a little shallower to really move, cover water, and take advantage of those fish feeding on those bait balls. So my deep cranks, I keep it really, really simple. My number one bait is gonna be a Strike King 6XD. I don't know how many thousands of bass have been caught on a 6XD, but it, it's gotta be a lot. But that 6XD, it's a, it's a, 
it's got to be a staple in every crankbait fisherman's arsenal. Um, it, it gets down deep. It has a real wide, a real aggressive kick. It deflects fairly well. They don't break the bank. If you do get hung up, you have to break them off. You don't have to be afraid to fish the treetops or fish around brush piles. They're not going to break the bank. They're not super expensive. Come in decent colors, but a Strike King 6XD is going to be my number one crankbait this time of the year. My number two, it's, it's kind of like this all year until we get into the real true cold water months. Number two is going to be the DT20 or the 16. It's the 16 right here. That's one of my favorite colors as well. But these guy, guys right here have a little bit different wobble. Some days they want the 6XD, some days they want the DT. Totally depends on the day. That's why I usually have them both tied up. Uh, 16 foot, 18 to 20 foot. You can, you know, the DT20 is down in 20 foot. What sets these two apart is this one's kind of high float. This one kind of just almost suspends. So if you're our, if you're a guy that's targeting those bait balls that are down in 18 foot, they're hanging out in treetops, you come through and you deflect off those treetop tips, that guy right there is a must. And then last but not least, I said I simplified it for you guys. I have three. It's going to be the Tactical DD Crank. A little tighter wobble. We designed this to be a, a fast moving crankbait, real tight wobble, real kind of finesse bait that you can burn. This thing gets down 15, 18 feet. And this is, if I can't get them to eat the other two, I switch to this. It's a different swim, different sound. And uh, that's kind of my one, two, three punch as far as deep, deep cranks. As far as color, Late summer, I go bait fish, bait fish, really, really bait fish, some silver, silver kind of sides, cheeks, kind of a ghosty color. On the flip side, I might need to go with like your powder blues, like your chartreuse and powder blues, or your uh, chartreuse black back colors. Those typically work good this time of the year and that late summer crankbait time those are the colors i go with now on the flip side i keep it really simple for my deep cranks right i just gave you three lord knows i probably have i don't i don't even want to guess 15 20 25 30 different deep cranks in my crankbait boxes i really really simplified it because those are the tried and true guys right there those are the three must-haves as far as the shallow fish um you know we got a few different things happening right we have the shad spawn that's happened the last couple months so now you have a lot of the little baby shad swimming around you have the bluegills that spawned so you have a lot of little baby bluegills up shallow moving around you have a lot of little bait fish in that, I'm gonna say less than eight feet, right? So that's where I really like to switch gears and go with square bills. Yeah, a lot of square bills won't reach down in eight feet, but this time of the year, some places you have grass that come up, you know, maybe you have grass that tops out in three feet, you know, and you got a little bit of play between the top of the grass and the water surface, maybe you got 18 inches or so, you can burn a square bill over the top, mimicking those bait fish, mimicking those baby bluegill, those baby crappie. Uh, and when you hit that tip, you know, you tick the tips of the grass, the tops of the grass, you can burn, 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 pause, rip, rip, get real aggressive with the square bill and you can trigger bites just like you could if you're fishing the deep diving crankbait and you uh, hit a rock or you deflect it off something with the grass. You can kind of create your own deflections with that rod, with your handle turns, just how aggressive you fish it when you hit that grass and that will help trigger bites as well if you're fishing shallow. So square bills, I have a few more square bills that I like only because they have different actions, different sounds. Um, let's start off with this guy. We've talked about this guy for years. This is the River to Sea Biggie, okay? 
real nice knock to it. As far as colors, square wheels, I keep it fairly simple. I'm going with your, your shad patterns and your craw patterns. That's it, really, really, really simple. But that guy right there, the River Sea Biggie, caught hundreds and hundreds of fish for Matt and I through the years, and that's just a, a proven fish catcher for us. Hits that four to five foot range. But again, you're covering water, just like with the deep, the deep diver, I might pull up to a spot with the deep diver and I might make eight to 10 casts. If it's a spot that I, that I have a waypoint on or I'm familiar with, I fished before and I know how it lines out, I don't need to idle over it. Uh, I don't need to do anything with my, with my big motor. I will shut that off, drop the troll motor, get up to the spot quietly. I'll make eight or 10 casts. And if nothing's going on, I don't see anything on 360 or anything on forward facing, I'm off to the next spot. Again, it's covering water until you come across those bait fish and those active fish. Same thing with the square bill, right? I might be in a big backwater. And let's say there's a mat back here that I've been catching frogfish on or flipping or or punching frog, you know, punching bass out of that mat, catching frogfish on top of the mat, around the mat, and then flipping and punching the middle of it and catching fish. Well, as that, as these overnight lows drop, the water temps drop, that that grass starts to die off, and maybe that mat, maybe it gets blown out. Maybe you have a late th summer thunderstorm or something. Who who knows, right? Those fish are going to move around. One, they're going to look for the, the greenest grass around. Look for green grass, that's your lively grass, that's the grass that all the bluegill are gonna be in, all the bait fish are gonna be in, the bass are gonna move to that. But if you're fishing this mat, and for whatever reason, you can't get them to come up top anymore, you might have to fish around the edges with a subsurface bait and a square bill. Chatter bait works great, but a square bill works really good because you can pause it, that thing's gonna float up. If you do get in the grass, you can rip it through, let it pop up. And those fish, as that bait backs up into their face, sometimes it is trigger and they have to eat. But pay attention to what's going on because it's gonna start, as we get into that fall transition, I mean, we're talking early transition right now, but as we get into that fall transition, that mat that you were catching frogfish on or that bay that you were catching topwater fish on, they might have ghosted you. They might back out to the next rocky secondary point because that's where all the bait fish are. Maybe there's a creek channel. There's some current. Those, those bait fish pull to that, you know, halfway up that creek channel into that current. Well, all those fish you were just catching this mat over here are now 400 yards over there by that creek channel so you have to cover water and that's why i like that square bill so much but again that guy right there it's a real um, easy bait to throw has a real good kick real good sound to it nice little rounded square bill so it deflects fairly well you don't get hung up fairly easy um it's just a winner for us i have three for you trying to keep it as simple as possible. That other one is that jabber jaw. This is a bait that came out a couple years ago, completely different. It's like a chatterbait bill, it's loose, right? So that bait gets a completely different action. It really side to side, has a little bit of a sound when that thing's rattling in the water, but it's just a cool little square bill, caught a ton of fish on it. It's just something different that a lot of fish haven't seen but uh, I threw that guy in there for you to check out. And then last but not least, this is one that uh, we caught a lot of fish on this time of the year, last year and all the way through the spring. That's that Bill Lewis, that's the ATV. Now, you guys have heard us talk about this bait. If you're, if you're familiar with the channel or you watch our, our videos, uh, we really rave about this bait because Unlike a lot of these other crankbaits, this one is fairly tough to get hung up. I don't care if you're throwing it up there in six inches of water, the way this bill angle is and design, it comes through cover and stuff really, really well. So if you're a guy that loves chasing that shallow water fish, loves throwing a square bill, check out this guy right here. Again, your shad colors and your craw colors. Couple other baits for you real quick. 
ultra shallow fish. Sometimes, maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. I've seen it a bunch. I'll be fishing a shoreline, I'll be fishing, working my way into the back of a bay, and I will see basically bass acting like you ever see that those videos on like Discovery Channel where the killer whales just kind of come up and, and they're chasing the seals and they beach themselves chasing seals? Same thing with bass. I've seen them blow up and grenade shad in like, like inches of water. It is crazy how shallow they will go. Also, a lot of times you get a little bit of different... Uh, depth between your water surface and the tops of your grass. If that is the case, throwing an extra shallow square bill can be awesome. Two of my favorites, this guy right here, that is the Spro Fat John 50. That thing runs less than two feet. So if you find yourself in that situation where you need that uh, little shallower depth running square bill, something that's not going to get hung up in that 18 inches or two feet, that guy is awesome right there. Look at the big old bill. It moves real wide kick. Again, that's kind of a, a ghost. That's kind of like a natural shad color. You know, you can get them in a, in a craw color as well. But um, that is a bait that I love throwing ultra shallow. And then this guy right here, this is the Little John. So we just talked about the Fat John. It's the Little John. It's kind of a ghost minnow, craw pattern. That's a real tight wobble quick moving square bill. I say square bill, it's kind of got a different build to it, but that is a great shallow water, quick moving bait. And then uh, this guy right here, if you're looking for that finesse, kind of quiet, up shallow, high float bait, this guy right here, this is the Rapala OG4 Tiny, Ott's Garage Tiny 4. It's a balsa bait, high float, but again, fish are up shallow. They are dirt shallow. I mean, I've had times where I've been fun fishing and the fish are blown up so shallow, I have to beach my boat, get out and walk and cast because I can't even get, I couldn't get within two or three cast lengths to those fish. That's how shallow they are. You get out and you walk and then you can make a cast and you can catch them on top water or whatever, but those fish, aren't afraid to go shallow. They use that shallow water is kind of like a fence line to keep those fish, those bait fish corralled, right? They push those fish into bays, they push those fish where they can't get out, those bait fish, and they'll sit there a couple weeks sometimes and just murder and murder all those bait fish. The baby bluegill, the, the baby shad, so much fun to catch them up shallow. Now, with that said, it's time to think about lipless cranks as well, okay? This guy right here, I've caught a lot of fish on it. It's a color I typ typically wouldn't have chosen, um, but I was throwing, I can't remember what I was throwing, I was throwing a treble hook, and I ended up snagging a baby bluegill on one of the treble hooks. And when I got that thing in and I held it to my hand, it looked like this guy right here. Kind of that goldish color. You see that purple in there? This was the closest bait color that I could find to those baby bluegill. But the Jackal, the TN70. You guys know how much we love this lipless crank. A little bit lighter than some of the three quarter ounce baits we like. But again, your shad patterns, your baby bluegill patterns. If you find yourself up there super shallow, you can cast and chuck and whine and burn this thing just like you would that square bill, or you could do that hopping mo method. Hop it just enough to vibrate four or five times. Let it fall. Let it fall. Doosh. Those fish are up there. They're waiting. Sometimes ripping a lipless like that kind of spooks the bait ball and that gets those fish all fired up. You can trigger them with spooking that bait ball as well. Again, throwing that crankbait, it's all about triggering those fish and uh, a lipless crank is a great way to do it all the way through fall. So this guy right there is another bait that I have in my arsenal. Guys, late summer crankbait fishing. Cover water, move quick, 
don't be afraid to move with those fish because they're chasing those bait balls. If you can get out early, you might see the bombs dropping on top. You might see the fish on your side imaging or your 360, your electronics, but those fish are all about the bait. They're chasing those bait balls. They're schooling up and a crankbait is a really good way, maybe the number one way to take advantage of those fish and get them in the boat. Guys, if you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comments section. I will try to get those as soon as possible. Down below in the video description, I will link to all the baits I talked about and I'll list my favorite colors, the rods, the reels, all that stuff that goes with it. Uh, make it as easy and as simple for you guys as possible. But don't be afraid to throw a crankbait as we transition into fall. Guys, if you like this video or you learned something from it, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.